Hey everyone, and welcome back to Auto Wisdom. Today, we're gonna to be diving into the Porsche 991.1 generation GT3 engine failures. We're gonna be covering the mechanical surroundings behind what caused this particular issue to occur, what Porsche had done in the past to remedy the issue, and we're also gonna talk about how the engine failures for the 991.1 GT3 will affect the current and future market values, and kind of a broad outlook of of what we can expect as enthusiasts from these cars in the coming years. The 991.1 generation of GT3 sort of broke Porsche into the modern era of what we think about when we think of 911 RSR race cars and GT3s and GT3 RSs. When you think of that stratospheric 9,000 RPM red line, those crazy PDK pops on the upshifts and that screamer of a flat six engine, it all started with the 991.1 and its 3.8 liter flat six, codenamed the MA175. And while this particular power plant is essentially a race car motorsport derived engine, it did not get off to the smoothest start. To begin, it's important to cover the history of the connecting rod bolt failures that actually ended up leading Porsche to initiate their first recall of the 991.1 GT3. The problem with the connecting rod bolts is that they were susceptible to braking, which ultimately led to a catastrophic engine failure. Now, when the bolts failed, they would puncture the cylinder block, causing oil to leak all over onto the hot exhaust, which in some cases actually led to the engine catching on fire and the whole car basically got engulfed in flames. Now, this issue was most common found on the early production models of the 991.1 GT3, and it actually ended up leading to a complete stop driving notice and a recall for or engine replacement by Porsche. Now, while the recall by Porsche ultimately remedied the connecting rod bolt failures, it was just the start of the string of issues that plagued the MA175. Following this, it was quickly discovered that there were issues with the finger followers of this flat six engine or the rocker arms. So these parts of the valve train were found to have metallurgical defects, particularly in certain batches of production leading to increased wear. And this wear was more pronounced on the inlet side of the finger followers, especially at higher RPMs. The problem was exacerbated in cars that were not driven aggressively enough as the finger followers would wear more due to lack of sufficient lubrication from high-speed operation. Generally speaking, the finger follower issue manifests itself in the form of cylinder misfires, and these are most notable, as mentioned previously, during operations with highly spirited driving, such as on a racetrack or if you're doing like an HPDE event, this is where you will most commonly run into this issue if it does happen to present itself. Typically, you can hear a fluttering at higher RPMs, which is indicative of a cylinder misfire. And you may also get a check engine light followed by limp mode or reduced engine power uh, after a certain RPM, generally speaking around six to 7,000 RPM, which not only indicates a misfire, but of course it could be a telltale symptom of the finger follower issue being a problem. The first form of diagnosis is to replace spark plugs and coil packs, or even swap the spark plugs and coil packs from the cylinder that is misfiring and tracking the codes to see if that misfire follows into the next cylinder that the spark plug or coil pack was swapped into. After an inspection of the fuel injectors as well, if there is still issues with the misfires happening, there's a good chance that it is problematic of the finger follower issues. And at that point, the head would have to be removed and then the engine's camshafts would have to be closely inspected for scoring. Now, it's also important to mention that lubrication and the oiling system of the MA175 seem to play a role in the prevalence of the finger follower or rocker arm issue, which also leads into the importance of understanding the various engine revisions that Porsche went to for the 3.8 liter that was featured in the 991.1 GT3, which we'll cover in just a bit later down in this video. Now, while the camshafts and the crankshafts seem to be robust and quite strong, that's not necessarily the problem. The advent of the finger follower rocker arm issue seems to be exacerbated by oiling to the far end of the cylinder block particularly with cylinder six. The diamond-like carbon coating on the finger rockers appears to show accelerated wear on the inland side, as mentioned previously, more so than on the exhaust side. Typically, one would assume that damage to the finger rockers is occurring at higher RPM operations, such as 8,000 plus RPM or so. 
However, that's somewhat of a guess. Once the diamond-like carbon coating has worn through on the lower foot of the finger lifter, the cam lobe will then start to score. The ECU identifies the timing issue created by the fine change in tolerances on the affected bank and then throws a check engine code. So the notion or understanding that metallurgical properties with the finger followers themselves were the sole cause of the issue does not seem to be fully credited and it seems like there is a little bit more going on in regard to the oiling system and how a lack of sufficient lubrication tends to accelerate wear on some of these rocker arms. Now for the longest time for most owners this was not a major fear because Porsche stepped up to the plate and did the right thing for their customer base by issuing a 10 year or 120,000 mile powertrain warranty on all 991.1 GT3s. And to add to the sweetness of this warranty, it was fully transferable to new owners that bought the vehicle secondhand or used. And regardless if you were tracking the vehicle, if the finger follower issue happened on the street, wherever the environment was, Porsche would essentially replace the motor for you, no questions asked, completely under warranty. The problem is, those warranties have pretty much come to an end or expired at this point, and this is why it's really keen to understand the various differences and variants of the 3.8 that Porsche revised throughout the life cycle of the 991.1 GT3, starting off with the E-Series, the F-Series, and the G-Series motors. Now the E and the F-Series, to be quite frank and to sum it up briefly, are plagued with issues. Now the light at the end of the tunnel with all of this is the G series or the G6 motor which was the final revision and final variant that was implemented into 2016 model year 991.1 GT3s and is the motor that Porsche will replace uh, the current GT3 with if they are replacing it under warranty due to one of these issues. The G6 GT3 engine is based on the GT3 RS of the 991.1 with a different oil filter, a larger filter neck, an updated oil pump, and a software flash that increases mid-range oil pressure. And of course, the rocker arms have that robust DLC coating on them, but with the added lubrication benefits and essentially having a de-stroked .1 GT3 RS motor in your GT3, this has resolved the vast majority of the issues with these cars. The G6 motor tends to be significantly more reliable than its predecessor variants. It also appears to produce healthier power outputs and more torque in the lower and mid range as well. And these cars are very rev happy. They tend to make all their power very high in the power band of the engine itself. And while they're not 100% prone to failures, they have largely remedied the problems and concerns that most .1 GT3 owners would be experiencing from the 991 generation. There are a few ways to check which version of the MA175 you have fitted into your .1 GT3, but the easiest way would be to go underneath the car, remove the cover for the oil pan. Technically speaking, you don't have to remove it to see, but generally speaking on the bottom or the back side of the block, you will see the engine code stamped in to the metal itself. And that is the most surefire way of being able to tell what variant of this 3.8 liter flat six you have in your GT3. Now with all that information being said, what does this mean for future and current values of the Dot one GT3 with the 3.8 now that the warranties have essentially expired from Porsche themselves? Well, ideally, if you're in the market for one of these cars, the best thing would be to verify that the car you are purchasing does have a G-Series motor implemented into it, and it was replaced just for that added peace of mind, uh, knowing that you have the best variant of the 3.8 issued from Porsche, and that most likely the engine was replaced at some point due to the experience of that rocker arm failure. As mentioned previously, these motors are quite robust, they are very, very powerful on and off the track, and they are very reliable as well. They sound amazing too, that's something that none of us can forget. Now for a GT3 that is not equipped with a G6 engine, that is equipped with an E or F series engine, as a prospective buyer, this is a great negotiation tactic to present to a seller by saying that essentially the warranty is now up, and you can use this to leverage it and uh, pick up one of these Porsches at a lower price. Now, while it's not a guarantee that the failure is going to occur, the likelihood of it happening is definitely there and the chances of it happening are definitely there. To some extent, you are rolling the dice 
and out of warranty to replace one of these engines or to perform a rebuild, it is not cheap. We're talking tens of thousands of dollars, if not upwards of thirty to forty thousand dollars, depending on where you go. If you're going directly through Porsche, it's probably going to be even more expensive. My hope and my belief is that as these cars tend to age, and now especially as the engine warranties have expired, we will see aftermarket companies, perhaps such as Dundon Motorsports, come out with kits or rebuild options to preventatively make maintain these cars and to keep them running on the streets for longer periods of time so that enthusiasts can enjoy them. There was a decently high production run of the 991.1 GT3. They are phenomenal cars from a performance standpoint and the 991 really as I mentioned in the beginning of this video kind of broke Porsche into that modern GT car era that we've all come to know and love. The performance is absolutely out of this world both on and off the track. The aftermarket potential with exhaust and tuning and race gas is all there as well and with some suspension braking upgrades these cars are absolute weapons on the racetrack and they're absolute screamers they sound incredible leading up to 9,000 rpm i do think that we will see some reduction in the values of these cars as the years go on like I said, particularly if they haven't been fitted already with the G6 motor, I can most definitely see these cars going for sale below $100,000, maybe in the $80,000 to $90,000 range. But truthfully, I don't think I can see them really going much lower than that. But I think the performance and what you're getting, and especially as the general car market uh, pushes more towards electric vehicles and hybrids, the 991 really is a sweet gem of a car that I think is just gonna be extremely desirable for enthusiasts, uh, not only now, but down the road. There's not much that can compete with it for the money out there. So with all that being said, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to go ahead and leave a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel down below if you have not done so already. I appreciate you guys tuning into this video and I will catch you all in the next one. Take it easy, my friends, bye-bye.